Hello there, my name is Joab Frank Jakaza. Welcome to this short program, America Votes. The United States of America goes to the polls on 8 November 2016. Now on 20 October, the Commission for Presidential Debates organized the last presidential debate between the Republican nominee Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, who is the Democratic Party nominee. The debate took place at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Jean Mensah from Ghana was one of the people who attended the debate on invitation from the Commission for Presidential Debates and National Democratic Institute. She joined more than 50 other delegates from about 25 countries worldwide who were invited to watch the debates. I was one of the people who watched the debates live and after the debates I spoke to Jean Mensa. Now just one or two things about Jean. She is the executive director of the Institute of Economic Affairs and she also serves as the coordinator of the Institute's Ghana Political Parties program. She has been involved in organizing candidate debates in Ghana. In 2004, she led the organization of presidential and vice presidential debates in Ghana, which introduced an issue-driven approach to the electioneering process, and they enabled the electorate to make an informed choice on the election day. And as someone with an interest in candidate debates in Ghana, I asked her views about the last U.S. presidential debate first, her reaction to the debate. Well, I think the debates went fairly well. It allowed us to see the death of the candidates and what you know, their policy positions on various issues were. And, uh, of course, it, I'm sure it has enabled the electorate to see the suitability of the candidates for the position of the president. So, all in all, I think that you know, it has helped enhance the dem- their democracy and... There are lots of lessons to be learned. I felt that the moderator should have been a little more firm, you know, with the candidates because there were t- times when, you know, some of the candidates were obstructing, you know, the moderator and preventing him from talking. There were also times when they went beyond the allotted time. I, I know that is natural, but I think it happened too often. And I think the fact that the candidates did not answer the specific questions, you know, some candidates did not answer the specific questions you know, posed a bit of a challenge to me. Going back to what you think the debate delivered, some people think the candidates didn't dwell on substantive issues. Um, Quickly the debate degenerated into unnecessary banter and uh, them just shouting names and calling each other all all sorts of things. What did you think about that? Uh, uh, Somebody coming from uh, Ghana, somebody coming from Africa, did you like the quality and the depth of the issues that were discussed or you think it didn't really deliver? I think it, to be fair, it, it did deliver. I think candidate you know, Clinton was very focused on issues. Of course, she would point out the flaws and weaknesses in her opponent's position, and that is to be expected in a debate. But I think that she was on point. She articulated her policies clearly. She articulated her positions very, very clearly. And unfortunately, Mr. Trump seemed to be focused on, you know, hitting hard and, you know, portraying his his opponent as unreliable as somebody who is not fit. So he did not really focus on the issues and did not outline his policies and provide, you know, answers to the questions that were posed to him. Who do you think came better off between Trump and Hillary Clinton? Who do you think uh, carried the day? I would think that Hillary Clinton carried the day. She was very presidential. She had, you know, she was very calm. She was very articulate. She seemed very well prepared and she outlined her positions very clearly, very articulately. And she seemed to be in, co- in control of herself. So all in all, I would, if you look at the issues that came up, the questions that were posed to them, she always ensured that she outlined clear, her clear vision on how to tackle the issues. So I think that she won the day. And then there is the issue of uh, the Republican nominee, Donald Trump, not showing any commitment to accept the results of the election. Something not very unusual in Africa. (laughs) Not at all. 
Not at all. But I must say that even in Africa, we are making progress. Yep. And so you find that candidates clearly state from the beginning that, you know, they are prepared, they'll be prepared to concede. And in this case of Ghana, our candidates have done just that. I mean, of course, you know, they've had issues, some issues with certain processes, but they've been ready to concede defeat. They have also sent out the message to their supporters that, you know, should the elections be carried out, of course, in a free, fair, and credible atmosphere, they would be prepared to concede defeat. And so it was very unusual to find Donald Trump not being willing to concede defeat or not being willing to, you know, indicate that should he lose, he would concede defeat. The way we do politics in Africa and the way it's being handled here, would you say there's any difference? Would you say we're miles apart or you think politics is politics within Africa and here? What, 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 what kind of parallels can you draw and what kind of differences did you see? Well, years ago, you would say that we were miles apart. But it seems that, you know, the U.S. politics and the way they do their politics here is not different from Africa at all. I mean, if you hear a candidate talking about rigging, that the elections are rigged, even the presidential debates, he tried to question that they are rigged. These are, you know, it's the usual rhetoric that you hear in Africa, where you find, you know, candidates questioning the process of elections, the whole system and the credibility around the elections. You hear also candidates, you know, questioning objectivity of platforms and saying that the debate platforms are rigged. And, you know, you basically hear of candidates not willing to concede defeat and also being very populist and, you know, focusing more on propaganda. I think it's really something that I'm, I'm surprised to see here and it's very, very similar to what we see in Africa. And it's a source of concern because we viewed the U.S. as a country that was matured democratically, and indeed they are. But when you find that we still have some of these issues, the basic issues with elections that we new democracies are grappling with, it's, it's worrying. Uh, now you hinted that the moderator, Chris, might have been a bit more firm. Uh, some people have argued that it's better to let the candidates debate and you know just let it flow naturally and it shouldn't really be the moderator's show. Uh, and and some obviously are saying no. It's the duty of the moderator to co- to to control the discussion and and demand answers and hold the the candidates to account. How do you how do you look at this? How do you reconcile the two? Well, of course, the moderator in this case, you know, asked specific questions, and the candidates had two minutes each to, you know, to answer those questions. Thereafter, they had ten minutes to have an open debate amongst themselves. So. Yes, it's not the moderator's show. He must allow it to flow. But with his two minutes, that, I mean, his questions that he, he asked, you would expect that he would you know, ensure that they would focus on the issues. With the open discussion, of course, you don't expect that he will control it. You know? But with the questions that he asked, I was expecting that he would get them to focus on the issues and provide answers. There were many times when both candidates evaded the questions and went off to address other issues. And so who, who, who are the beneficiaries? These are questions that the public and the electorate would want answers to. And if they don't provide it, then on what platform would they get answers to those specific questions? Finally, Africa is moving forward in uh, inculcating a debating culture among its politicians. And you have witnessed how the U.S. organizes its candidate debates and how they execute them. What lessons are you taking home? What are the major things that you think as Africans we can learn? I think debates are essential. I believe that, you know, as Africans and particularly African leaders, those, if when you want to govern, you must allow yourself to be subject to probing questions by the people to ensure that you understand their their concerns and have the capacity to address them. I think that, you know, anyone who wants to lead must be able to address the concerns of the electorate. I think it shows it's a sign of democratic maturity and it's also a sign that the candidate is capable and understands what the issues are. 
So I think that this is a good culture. The debating culture is a good culture that we must embrace. And it's, you know, it helps us to focus on issues. It promotes issue-based elections. And it also allows the citizens to make an informed choice. Mind you, they are citizens who are aligned to parties, and no matter what, they would vote for, for those parties. But there's also a growing number of you know, citizens who really are floating, who really want, who are not aligned to any specific party and are looking for candidates who would provide them with the answers to their questions, who would provide them with, you know, a vision and a program that they feel would help them and help the country. Any quick points, take home points uh, in point form, like how to organize the debate or what to look out for, anything that you saw that you think we can take back home? I like the idea of the spin room. Mm-hmm. Pretty much at the Institute of Economic Affairs and for their Ghana debates, we really try to. What's the spin room for those who haven't heard of it or seen it? Well, it's a room where you have lots of media and journalists gather after the debates and they talk to the surrogates and you know the campaign teams of the candidates. And basically the whole idea is that you know those surrogates and teams of the candidate really emphasize and provide more details into the candidate's position. So basically that is what the spin room is all about and it's something that we've never done in Ghana but it's something that we would like to emulate. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. That was Jean Mesa, the executive director of the Institute of Economic Affairs from Ghana. She's also the coordinator of the Institute's Ghana Political Parties program. Speaking to me in Las Vegas, Nevada, shortly after the third U.S. presidential debate at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. You've been with me, Job Frank Chakaza. Goodbye.